On this hunt, I'm going after Miriam's wild turkeys in the Powder River Basin of southeastern Montana with my brother Matt. Now I got this spot, I don't go anywhere else. The weather is nasty, but if the birds play ball, this could be one of the best hunts and tastiest meals of the year. That coyote just spooked our turkey. We got birds. I'm Steven Ranella. To me, hunting isn't only about the pursuit of an animal. It's about who we are and what we're made of. It's about sustenance, survival. It's about connecting to the land. It's about the purity of the challenge. It's about life. In each and every one of us, there is a primal instinct to hunt and consume. I live to hunt and hunt to live. I am a meat eater. hunting is one of the greatest joys in my life. The only thing better than hunting turks is hunting them with my older brother Matt in our secret spot. On this map right here is some of the best public land turkey hunting out there. In this state, for sure. It's really one of the only backcountry, backpack style turkey spots that I know about. Now I got this spot, I don't go anywhere else. We've been coming here for over a decade and haven't seen another hunter yet. So I don't want to say exactly where we are and blow out our spot, but I'm comfortable telling you we're in the Powder River Basin of southeastern Montana. We've got four days, three llamas, and two tags apiece. This is gonna be a blast. Truth be told, the llamas are not entirely necessary, but Matt likes to keep them in shape, or what he calls legged up, for the upcoming elk season. Plus it's nice, because they can carry plenty of water. And honestly, it's just kind of fun to have them hanging around camp. Considering how these roads turn into pure gumbo in the rain, we go as far as we dare in the van, load up the llamas, and head to our campsite. This hunt is not without its challenges. The weather is not what I think of when I think of turkey weather. Forecasters are calling for spring snow, which might put a damper on the birds' activity levels. The weather usually during spring turkey season is like the weather they have on the Dukes of Hazard. Sunny, not too hot, just perfect, nice, dry weather. Some years I actually wear my Daisy Dukes doing this. <laughs> you need to get a llama decorated like the General Lee. So. <laughs> and the wind is gusting right now, meaning it's harder for us to hear them gobble. In addition, the area is still recovering from a forest fire that swept through last summer. So the turkey's food supplies and roosting trees could be all shifted around. It's not necessarily gonna be a walk in the park. You wanna just stake up right here and camp yeah. here? I mean, yeah. it's like, seems like a great spot. <laughs> By the time we finish setting up camp, it's late in the day. But with the little bit of light we have left, we decide to take a preliminary look around. So Matt's heading off that way. And I'm gonna head this way. I don't think we've ever killed a turkey past 4 p.m. It's a quarter to four right now. So we're either gonna break a record today or we're just gonna count this as scouting. Just find pockets of sign, just to have ideas where to look for birds tomorrow. So I should be able to go this way and cover a couple miles, maybe three, four mile loop. This late in the day, if I do get on some turkeys, depending on what they're doing, there's a strong likelihood that I'll just see what they're up to and put them to bed and come back and work them in the morning instead of harassing them right now when they might not be as responsive. Kind of funny to be looking at elk while you're turkey hunting. That's a good sign right there. It's been rained on, but it rained like hell the last couple days. I swear I just heard a gobble. <laughs> Not a doubt in my mind, man. edges, so I don't want to go busting in here. What I want to do is 
You see this line of timber? There's a big drop right there. I want to go back this way, pick up that line of timber, and then work up instead of coming across this field, because coming across this field is a great way to get busted. Sage flats, also like don't the turkey give them the stink eye just right there, you know. They bust you out on this stuff. Calm down. <laughs> 5 p.m. time, man. Wait! God, that dude was playing ball. Oh, yeah. Every time you get by a turkey, and these aren't, you know, these aren't as big as Easterns, but every time you get by a turkey, you're like, man, that's a big bird. I can't believe how well that worked out. Ha! <laughs> Woo! Cow, man. That is great. That is the best thing in the world. I love hunting turkeys. Five o'clock on the button is now 501. Oh, I love that, man. That is so fun. You get a strong feeling you're going to kill a bird when you start hearing his wingtips hitting the ground. You hear that, like, you're like, okay, this bird's tight. The best thing about hunting turkey, especially like in this kind of like western situation where you have sagebrush, is you're calling and you're like, burr, burr, and you know he's getting closer. And then that head is just like, it almost seems like it's going like purple red, purple red. You just see that thing coming across the top of the sagebrush. It, it, I mean, there's just nothing cooler than that, man. When the weather's not right, I tend to start setting myself up for disappointment. But the key is, you can set yourself up for disappointment all you want. Don't act on it, though. You still have to hunt hard, and this bird proves that, man. You can't just think like, ah, oh, it's super windy, spitting snow, can't hear the birds. You know, I'm gonna go back and sit around and wait for the weather to clear. Because went out, and just happened to have a gobble blow into me on the wind. I mean, it just really proves, just like, keep hunting, no matter what. The main key now is getting Matt into a bird. If we can get Matt into a bird, then we can each get us into two more birds, come out of here with a limit of four birds. We're each going home with 16 or so dinners worth of turkey. What's up? Back at camp, Matt tells me about his scout. Turns out he was actually on a bird when some uninvited competition showed up. Kyle. <laughs> he 
he was so sure we were a turkey that even after he stared us in the eye for 30 seconds, he still thought it was lunchtime. I would not be surprised if that coyote just spooked our turkey. No matter. We didn't even expect to have this Tom. So in celebration of my unexpected luck, I'm gonna cook up a turkey hunting favorite, giblets, heart, liver, and gizzard. This is the gizzard right here. There's a really tough leathery liner inside the gizzard. You wanna get rid of that. You can't even chew it up. So you just peel that tough leather away, and the rest of that's edible parts. Liver right there. There's a ticker. I'm just cutting all the good pieces off this jib. You just want the stuff that looks like meat. Oh, that's mine. I get the heart ticker. Grab it, grab it, grab it. Which do you like better? The heart. Yeah, the gizzard bounces back too much. What's up with Tussle? <laughs> <laughs> I'm not saying, even if you were comparing two supermodels, you'd have to make a choice. I'm saying the heart is a little better, a little less springy. A gizzard tastes like if you somehow could combine rubber and styrofoam. I'll like a rubber, a rubber styrofoam I'll buy deposit that. that tastes like meat. <laughs> That's, yeah, that's exactly right. So in the morning, I'm gonna probably just go north. And, and, and maybe I wind up doing a big loop-de-loop. -loop. And you'll be bearing down on some Tom and boom, I don't know where someone else will get it. It'll be me or something. But I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> but, it'll be, but I'm gonna go. Oh, man. That would, uh, that would disappoint and scare me at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> you go that way, I'll go the exact opposite direction. OK. We'll either meet back up or not. Mm -hmm. Maybe I'll see you in the evening. Maybe yeah. I'll see you for, yeah. nap, for noon nap time. And I'll trust that you're out there working hard. Yeah. I mean, if it's if the breeze dies down, I would probably stay out there all day. It's going to be a good long day of hunting, man. I think that we can get some action. In the morning, we split up and head in opposite directions. I head north to see if I can't get lucky again in the same area I was yesterday. Meanwhile, Matt follows his own hunch and heads south. Yeah. 
it was so close. He totally caught me off guard, but it worked out. Probably a two and a half year old bird. Of course, for your photo op with your toms, you always like lay them like this and then fan them out. Just beautiful. Matt guts his first bird and stashes it under a tree. I don't want anything to happen to Mr. Bird. Then heads out for another one. Meanwhile, I go deeper into the brakes looking for my second tom. the turkeys. <laughs> Matt and I had locked away four days to hunt. And killing my bird on the second day, it's like exciting, you don't want to pass it up. But then you tagged out early. It gives you 50% fewer days to spend in the turkey woods. You know, you just like being out here. I mean, I'm happy to get two birds, but it is funny to think that I just deprived myself of two days of hunting by getting successful too quick. But I do a lot of hunting where there's no success. So I should just enjoy this while I have it. I'm tagged out and back at camp. Eventually, Matt returns with his own birds and his own stories. Did you get into them? They are. I got into little group right off the bat. And I thought they were still in the tree when this guy comes around the corner and catches me with my pants down, like the gun's sitting next Ooh. to me. And you had your pants down? <laughs> <laughs> Metaphorically. And then the second one's just like a big wad of jakes. Oh, really? I threw the Jake break on them because I don't, I like those Jakes. I was actually looking forward to hunting off your tags. I know, you. and I said the same thing. Let's put your bird in the roost. This hunt couldn't have gone better. We both met our limits and we'll bring back enough food for about six family size meals each. So to celebrate, tonight I'm trying something new. I'm 
gonna be cutting off a breast fillet and making wild turkey schnitzel. No one's gonna know what it's at at Thanksgiving. It's an Austrian preparation. Boneless meat thinned with a mallet, or in this case a rock, and then breaded, fried, and served with wedges of lemon. Nice. That's looking good for a camp cutlet. It's gonna be good schnitzel. Hit that with lemon. But I think this is gonna take camp turkey to the next level, man. Oh yeah. That's like a good way to have bird right there. Mm -hmm. That's really good. When I go home and cook this for the missus, I'm not gonna cook it any different. Mm. No, I mess with perfection. It's really, really good. You got some more over there? You can make some more? Mm -hmm. Turkeys are a strange and beautiful bird. I especially love the sound of a gobble. You never know where it's gonna lead. Maybe the bird shuts up and you lose them. Or maybe you get lucky and that next gobble hits you so close, it's like a thump in your chest. But no matter what happens, even if the bird gives you the slip and loses you, you walk out of the woods wanting to tell your story. But who am I kidding? It's better over a meal of wild bird. That was probably the best piece of turkey I've ever had. Cheers. Cheers. There's Turks. And if you're as lucky as I am, you've got a hunting partner like my brother Matt with you to go into the woods collecting not just thrills and food, but stories as well. That's what hunting, when done right, is all about.